Hello, my name is Joseph Meyer. I'm an electronics engineer and cloud architect at um, the company Rodi in Schwarz. It's a, a German uh, Munich located uh, company. I'm an OKD user since uh, 2018 together with my team. And this is a story how we came from OKD to OpenShift in three years. We had uh, started a digital, digital transformation program in spring uh, 2018. And the goal was to get the skills in my company to build up digital business. And one of the first goals was to create uh, an MVP of a cloud product for a trade show that um, happened uh, in autumn 2018. That's only five months after the start of the program. And this was very tough for us because we had experience with Docker, but not with Kubernetes. And it was clear to us that we want to do that with, uh, on Kubernetes. And the first task for this MVP was to provide Kubernetes clusters, um, two ones, one on-premises for our developers, um, because we have the policy in my company that no source code ever has to be available in the public cloud. So we um, created, we had to create a cluster on-premises for our developers so they can access the source code and do builds for their um, artifacts. And the second cluster should be in the public cloud so our customers uh, can access them because we don't serve um, our software from our on-premises cluster to the internet. We have separate clusters for that. That was the goal and the first task and the race started. We had a few requirements for that. Um, at least there were three very important ones. The first one was um, don't pay any license fees for the Kubernetes distribution because, uh, yeah, we started with our digital business and we didn't want to have, have a burden of the license fees on them. And the motto was let the business grow first. So this is uh, the most important requirement in the beginning for us. The second one was um, the system must be stable. That's obvious, yeah, but we learned that it's not so easy to achieve. Um, we must take, and the distribution should take care about everything uh, that yeah, you don't want to mess around normally with, with networking, with storage, and a, a few more things. Yeah, we learned a lot about that. It's a hard way that it's not easy to maintain these things if you have to. So uh, yeah, and also if you look back, it's it's one of the biggest and most important requirements you should uh, take into account if you choose a Kubernetes distribution also. The third requirement was that we um, would like to have the same stack um, on premises and in the public cloud and the same user experience. So um, that our developers don't have to switch around in their minds um, with, with the usage of the tooling um, independence of if they use the on-premise cluster or the public um, cloud cluster. We wanted to have a look and feel that's the same everywhere. Then we went into an evaluation phase. Five months is uh, very tough, so we rushed uh, through that very fast. First, we tried the obvious. Uh, we used uh, vanilla Kubernetes to create our first clusters and had take care about everything on our own storage, networking, usability was, was uh, disastrous in the beginning. And so we gave up very soon. That was not the way we wanted to work um, together with our company. So we were searching for something better. So we tried out several community driven Kubernetes distributions. I don't want to name them, um, but we had mixed experiences. We had problems with stability. Uh, I, I remember one tool that had an automatic install of a clusters and every 
second installation failed uh, because of bugs. User experience was not so good on the others. So we were, yeah, we had no good feeling that we are on, on the right track. That was a, was a very tough time for us. During this evaluation phase, um, it was it was a pure coincidence that we attended a sales presentation for OpenShift because OpenShift um, violated our most important requirement that we don't want it to spend money for our Kubernetes cluster. You remember we did not want to have the burden of license fees on our digital business, um, but um, yeah, it, it sounded very good what we heard here. The salesman uh, did a very good job in this presentation. And um, yeah, he told us about that there is a free edition or a community driven edition of OpenShift called OKD. And this is something we never heard about during our research. Um, and yeah, it was, it was awesome because on the paper, it was free. It was a turnkey solution, uh, very similar or, or at least almost the same as OpenShift um, regarding the features. It uh, took care about storage network, had a nice UI at that time, um, and, and great dev tools, took care about builds. Everything was integrated very good in the web UI. It was great for our developers. We also got very, very good feedback from them. And the third one was that OKD3, okay, we could we could install it everywhere, um, on premise, on our vSphere um, clusters, and in the public cloud in Azure. It was very easy to get clusters running. We had lots of configuration options. We had um, Ansible um, out of the box coming with OKD OK, that uh, did the installation. And it was great. We tried it out. We used it for our MVP in the end, and yeah, we successfully delivered our MVP on the trade show running on OKD. Um, and yeah, management was very happy uh, with us, and it was a was a cool time. It was very stressful, but uh, we learned lots of new things during this phase. A year later, in 2019, we delivered even more cloud products. Yeah, and we were the heroes uh, because we enabled all of them with, uh, uh, yeah, with a great distribution. Uh, in 2019, everything was everything was cool. With with OKD, we were very happy. We didn't uh, regret that we chose it. Also in 2019, we improved and automated our cloud ecosystem because uh, for the MVP, we had uh, taken lots of uh, shortcuts and workarounds because we were not so experienced with Kubernetes. Uh, and the next goal was to automate everything. So we found lots of tools that helped us a lot in this phase. Ansible, we had experience with that before. I found Terraform. Uh, that's absolutely great tool for creating um, infrastructure on yeah, uh, different look. Yeah, with different providers, um, it's available for vSphere, Azure, AWS, for, for everything you can imagine. So we use Terraform to create the uh, infrastructure and Ansible to um, install and configure OKD. Then we created CI/CD pipelines. I liked a lot that um, OpenShift had great support for Jenkins. Uh, or has great support for Jenkins. Everything is tightly integrated in the web UI. That's nice. And also we created um, our first service, a uh, self-service portal. That's a tool running on our cluster that um, provides our developers uh, simple wizards in a web user interface um, where you fill out a few fields and get tasks done on the cluster. Like, uh, setting up a CI/CD environment with Jenkins, with the proper secrets, everything um, completely automatically set up. Um, people liked that. And um, yes, it was, was very cool. We learned a lot in this, at this time. Um, in the beginning months, we learned 
that um, the last release of OKD3 um, occurred on in autumn uh, 2018, and no new version came came out. At that time, um, OpenShift 4, in the beginning of 2019, I think, OpenShift 4 was released, but no OKD4 was available. And all over the, the completely year, no OKD4 was uh, in sight. And this was a problem for us because more and more tools did not work on OKD3 because um, Kubernetes version, I think it was 1.11, um, got uh, too old for lots of tools and we had to wisely choose which tools we use. This uh, was manageable, but yeah, we were waiting for something new for OKD4 and uh, it did not come. So we started to yeah, learn what's blocking the release of OKD4. I myself was, uh, I tried um, OKD4 Alpha in November 2019. I remember that because I had a colleague of mine. Um, so he had, was a master of our DNS server and he spent um, Saturday evening or Saturday night together with me in a Skype session to set up everything we need for OKD4. He helped me debugging the first steps. And in the end, it worked. I saw a web UI. I was so happy. The, I remember that this web UI was so much advanced over that we um, already laughed with OKD3. It was so, so much better. And, but it was not um, easy to get there. Yeah. I had to do lots of manual steps, uh, hacking around in the OS, in the Linux uh, console to find problems, why, why the installation failed. And it, it was an alpha. It was okay. And yes, and it worked on vSphere very good. If it, if it ran, it ran very pretty good. And I, I, um, dove, um, deeper into development. I found this uh, OpenShift dev channel on Slack. And I also found out that there is an OKD working group. At first, I thought this is a closed club of Red Hat employees, but learned very fast that everyone who uh, wants to help can attend this working group. So I did. Um, and the goal was to, to help or do my best what I can do. Um, to bring uh, OKD for um, life. And yeah, that what I did in 2020. I started helping with OKD4. So um, I created a few fixes for the installer for Azure, for example, because Azure um, at this time did not, was not supported by OKD at all. Um, because there were a few problems with Fedora Chorus that is used on in OKD, in comparison to Red Hat Chorus that is used in OpenShift, there were a few problems with that. Not no big ones, but this was my first attempt to create a pull request um, to the OKD4 community GitHub repos, and my first PR was so big uh, because I also patched a Terraform code, and it was far too far too big. And Vadim Rudkowski, one of the main supporters of uh, OKD was uh, refusing it. Um, he he used some nice words. I don't rem don't remember. I was uh, I was sad that it was uh, refused. But yeah, he told me it was too big. I understand that. I created a much uh, smaller PR, and this one was accepted then. And Azure was available for OKD. This were my first steps. I did lots of testing at that at that time. I built up a home lab home lab. Uh, at home uh, with the Horizon PC and uh, 16 cores. I never used them um, to that level, but I want, wanted to be sure that I am not blocked by anything. I did lot, lots of testing. I also organized a um, vSphere license. There is a um, uh, trial. No, it's not a trial. It's, um, it's called VMware User Group. I don't remember exactly the, the product name. It, it's available for 150 euros. It's very affordable. And I did also that because I wanted to get OKD4 live. And I reported lots of bugs, fixed several of them, uh, 
not all bugs are so complicated to solve, uh, I found out. And yes, yeah, so this was my, was a time where also our team learned much about the insights of OKD4 and that we can use the me mechanics um, to almost solve any any task we wanted to achieve. Um, yeah, it was it's it's a great great thing. I also did um, something um, that may sound a bit a little bit crazy, but um, I created a T-shirt for the working group video meetings. I always uh, attended them regularly, and uh, the idea was to increase the release pressure. Um, if everyone always sees this OKD 4GA uh, on my shirt, it it was not so. Um, it was more a funny idea, and I promised to not uh, change the shirt before the release um, has uh, been made. But it took a, a few months. Yeah, I have to admit that I changed the shirt in between. I never told that to anybody. Finally, OKD4 was released in July uh, 2020. It was very great because we had uh, already prepared OKD4 um, clusters uh, on premises. We installed everything and only were waiting for the for the GA uh, signal. Um, a few months before, I discovered Argus CD. That's a tool um, for GitOps, and I found out that with OKD4. It's very easy to configure things uh, with GitOps because there are uh, operators everywhere and you can, can use um, also custom resources. That's a configuration method of operators with GitOps. This is also great. Um, so you have everything in Git, no, no scripts running um, once and developers are changing configuration and nobody knows uh, um, afterwards who has changed what because everything is in a cluster. Git is a single source of truth. That's nice with Argo and uh, especially in combination with OKD4. We changed our self-service portal uh, to use GitOps because of that. Um, and also we migrated all on-premises apps from OKD3 to OKD4. We had to change the routes and other few things for the DNS um, name. For OKD4 contains, I think, uh, a part that is called apps in the in the uh, URL. Uh, that's a little bit annoying, but yeah, we had to change that for all our apps. Uh, and in the end, it worked. Since uh, July 2020, we upgraded um, OKD4 on-premises very often. It almost always worked great. Um, between OpenShift 4.0 Six and 4.7, there were a few hiccups, um, but we could always fix it or find workarounds together with the community around them. Um, yes, since 2018, um, we attracted many of our, of our developers to start a Kubernetes journey um, on uh, create a digital business on our Kubernetes platform. That's great. Um, I counted uh, last week that we had onboarded more than 50 projects, not only playgrounds, uh, but real projects on our OKD clusters. And it's available for more than 2,000 developers in my company. It's running running very stable. And uh, but we are using we are moving more and more business critical applications to our OKD clusters. We have a big manufacturing, uh, a, a few manufacturing sites, to be more precise, that want also to use um, Kubernetes and uh, cloud services. And that's why we decided to invest uh, at this time in uh, commercial support, because we have digital business running. Um, we have lots of interest in my company. We have business critical applications. And we always say that this should be the time um, to invest in commercial support. And we did that a, a few weeks ago. We started um, creating an Arrow cluster. That's the abbreviation for Azure Red Hat OpenShift on Azure for our public cloud cluster. 
it's a, it's a customer facing one. And um, on premise, we invested in uh, in OpenShift, or the there is also a um, um, uh, what was the name of that OKE um, OpenShift Kubernetes engine. It's not OKD, it's OKE. Don't ask me why they are sounding similar. Um, OKE is a, a version. Um, it's it's OpenShift. Um, in fact, uh, you have support, but not for everything. And we are not using all the features of OpenShift at the moment for all our environments. Um, and because of that, we chose um, OKE for some clusters, and OpenShift is then the full-fledged version for the services we need full support. And yeah, for the moment, we are very happy with this decision. And uh, to conclude what I told you in this uh, presentation, I am absolutely thankful and uh, to yeah to have OKD um, during our journey. It helped us tremendously to launch our digital business. In our opinion, OKD is a great door opener for OpenShift and enterprises because you can have OpenShift uh, with zero risk. Um, to start your digital business, yeah, you have the same user experience. Um, a few things are different uh, regarding upgrades because in OKD you only have um, a rolling distribution. This means that you, if something is fixed, it won't get um, backports. It's always going forward. In OpenShift you have several stable or fast channels. Um, and yeah, but if you don't need that, and for in the beginning you don't need that, yeah, to be honest, uh, then it's a fair deal to don't pay any fees, um, and you have a full-fledged, uh, great Kubernetes distribution. And I, I can, yeah, congratulate a Red Hat for the decision to have a community version of OpenShift in their program, uh, because it's, as I said, I think it's a, a big to open up for their main product, OpenShift. I have to say thank you to everybody from the OKD community and Red Hat uh, who helped us in the last years that we came to this point. And uh, special thanks go to Vladimir Rutkowski, uh, Christian Glombeck, and Diane Muller. They always were um, very helpful. And uh, yeah, Vadim, especially Vadim, is, uh, it seems to be online. 24/7 on Slack, and uh, without these guys, uh, we would not have managed the first steps with OKD4. And thank you all. This is our, yeah, this was our journey. It took us three years. Now we are absolutely experienced in Kubernetes. I can compile some modules on my own. Uh, we know the insights of of uh, OKD and uh, Kubernetes very good. Um, we help in the community um, in, in several projects. Um, thank you for watching, and if you have questions, I'm available in the chat. And that's a wrap.